Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to start a Photoshop document. So you may have a Photoshop icon on your desktop, in which case you can just double click on that to open Photoshop. Or you may need to go down to your Start button and go to All Programs and choose Adobe Photoshop from the list. We wait for Photoshop to open. And then our first step after that is to click on File and then new. Now there may be a bit of a delay when you click on file. You may have to click on it more than once uh, if you jump right away after Photoshop is opened. Uh, it's still initializing when you see the visuals, when you first see the visuals. So um, don't be alarmed if file doesn't work right away. Just be patient, maybe count to three or something. Depending on your computer, it, it may not uh, respond right away. Anyway, hopefully it has, and we can go File and click on New. All right, so now the New File dialog opens up, and uh, the first section here is Name. So if you know what you would like to name the document, um, I'll just call it Sample 1, for example, you can put that in right now. You can always give it a name later. It's not something you have to decide on until you actually save it to disk, but this will uh, sort of prep and put the name that for the disk in before you've actually saved it. So uh, here it's, it's giving the default Photoshop size. So let's look at that for a moment. It's seven inches by five inches, right? And that's the printing size if it is printed at 72 pixels per inch, or DPI is sometimes it's called, right? Dots per inch. So, uh, but you can change this uh, for example, you can you could put in instead of 72, you could put in 300 pixels per inch. It would still print at 7 by 5 inches, but it would print at a much uh, higher resolution, right? So, uh, this is, in this way, you can control not only the print size of your document, but the kind of the granularity of it. Now, the color mode RGB is standard for Photoshop. There are other choices. But most of the uh, filters, etc., are um, RGB specific. So if you choose anything else, you may find that filters aren't available to you, or certain filters aren't available to you. Um, stick with RGB unless you know you need uh, something else. Right? And uh, background contents default is white for the background of the document. You can choose transparent, or uh, you can choose the background color. Um, which is the uh, when you're looking at your color palette here on your toolbar, the one on the left is the foreground, the one on the right in behind is the background color. Okay, so depending on what that is, white at the moment, but that you could have set that to something earlier, uh, that's the color that it will be. All right, we're going to stick with white for our sample. And let's look at other presets. So right now it's switched to custom because I put in the 300, so it's no longer the Photoshop default. But we can use this drop down, and uh, there are US paper options, international paper options, photo options, you know, 4x6, 5x7, 8x10 type stuff, uh, web options, etc. Uh, let's go in uh, right now and choose US paper. Okay, and we have various choices here letter, legal, or tabloid. So, letter is your standard 85 by 11 right? Legal is uh, 8.5 by 14, and tabloid is 11 by 17, right? And again, you can adjust the resolution. So, um, for example, if you were doing uh, letter size, but you wanted the high resolution glossy type, high resolution that you get on a magazine cover, I believe that would be like 2400 pixels or 1200 pixels per inch, very high resolution, right? But still, if printed at that resolution, an 8.5 by 11 inch sheet. Okay, so let us um, go ahead and, well, let's leave it here at, uh, we'll put this back to 72, and we'll go with the 8.5 by 11. Okay, so this is our, our sheet, and uh, you'll see that we can see the whole sheet of paper and we have zoomed in it. Photoshop has basically fit it to the window. So which, and you can do that yourself. You can go fit, <laughs> fit. you can go view and then uh, fit on screen. Okay. 
you, there's other options such as actual pixels which at 72 dpi this is the size okay in terms of actual pixels matching the pixels of the document one to one with the pixels on your monitor so depending on the size of your monitor on this monitor I have to scroll but on your monitor uh, if it's a very high resolution monitor uh, this would be a smaller view where you'd see the whole page right and uh, we also have the, the print size which is showing up the same here and otherwise we can zoom in and we can zoom out right and uh, I guess those are the main options I would show you at this moment so let's go ahead and fit on screen once more um, and now that you have that overview of the document you can start laying uh, elements onto it so since that's not what this video is about let's assume that we have done that and that there's some beautiful complex composition here and we want to save the document All right so now we can go to file and we can click on save as okay you'll notice that save was grayed out because uh, save is a command that you give to a document that's already been saved but save as it's going to prompt you for a uh, folder and a file name. So the file name contains the sample one that I put in earlier as the document title, right? And then you want to choose a place to put the document. So uh, if you need immediate access to it and uh, you may, you're going to just delete it and clear it off later, you may just want to save it to your desktop so that it's easy to find. It's right there on your main screen. If it's something that you need to archive, you can click on libraries here, for example, go into documents, you can create a folder, right? So let's say I can put a folder called samples. And I did that by clicking the uh, create new folder icon up here. Then I can go into that folder and I can hit save. Okay, so now you see that it's sample01.psd, which is a Photoshop document. And if I go to the file explorer, on my system and I go into documents and into my samples folder there's my Photoshop document All right. so that's how you create a file and how you save a file so now let's go ahead and close Photoshop because of course once you've done all of that and you've restarted your computer how do you get to it All right so one way is to go into if it hasn't been very long you can open Photoshop again and Let's see it when I clicked on file it didn't respond right away but now it has so you can go into file and you can go to open recent and there's going to be a list of recent files so if it's a, a, rec a very recent file you can go into this list and then just click on the file name and the file will load all right so um, let's close Photoshop again and go in another way so now we can go ahead and click on our, our file explorer, go into documents, go into samples, there's our document. Under normal circumstances now all you would have to do is double click on that document because uh, generally on a computer with Photoshop um, a PSD file will be associated with Photoshop and it will open this way uh, for you. Now let's close Photoshop and look at that again. What happens if some image viewer or something else has taken over your uh, PST uh, extension? You can right click on the file, right? And you can choose open with, okay? And you should have in the, somewhere in the list here, there, there's nothing else on this computer, but on some computers there would be many items, but you should have Photoshop in this list so you can click on Photoshop make sure that always use the selected program to open this kind of file is selected and then click OK and what that will do is that will reset your computer to having Photoshop as the default uh, handler for PSD files so that is the basics of creating and saving and opening a Photoshop file. Hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching.